Hey, week two, oh, okay, just kidding. Week seven homework, video number two, laws of logarithms. Okay, the final video in the homework series, week seven. <clears throat> okay, so remember all the exponent laws? I probably should have reviewed those before I started this. So let's just do it really fast. I'm gonna erase it, but remember all of your exponent laws are you learn these like way back, I don't know, grade nine. So if you had two things like x to the power of three times x to the power of four, if you have a base, you can add the exponents, so that would become x to the power of seven. The key is you can only do these things if you have the same base. You need that, which you do, it's an x. Okay, what if you're dividing? So if you had x to the power of six divided by x to the power of two, our exponent law for division is subtract your exponents, so this would be x to the power of 4. So we got adding, we got subtracting with the division. We also learned power of a power, so if you have x to the power of 3 to the power of 2, we learned that we can just multiply the exponent, so it becomes x to the power of 6. And we learned anything to the power of is always 1. And finally, we learned about negative exponents. And we learned we can actually take the reciprocal and that exponent will become positive. So those are all the exponent laws we learned. And the key for at least these two are they have to have the same base. And then these other ones are just, yeah, whatever, different things. So all of these exponent laws are going to be like really similar to the laws of logs. Um, yeah, but with logarithms. So let's check those out. I'm just going to erase this because I need the space. Okay, here we go. Law of a product. So if you have the log base a of xy, turns out you can actually write that as um, an addition. So this is a product, meaning multiplication, x times y. So it turns out, just like exponents, we can actually break that up into log a x plus log a of y. So if they have the same base, that a, and there's an, like two different, it doesn't matter, the x and the y are different, that's fine. You can write that as a product or as an addition. So it's kind of similar to the exponent laws with the multiplication and addition. It's like the same combo. So we can write a log. This is just like different ways to write logs. And the reason we're doing this is because I don't know, when we're solving equations with logs, sometimes we might, we might want to write them in a different way. So like, sometimes it's more useful to have it look like this, and sometimes we want to break it up. A lot of times we want to condense things, so we want to write it as a single logarithm instead of two things added together. So like, there's different reasons you might want to do this. Um, so we just need to learn the rules, just like we did for exponent laws, and then we're able to manipulate equations more easily. Okay, so law of a quotient is just division. So we're, it's kind of the same as the exponent law. You can break it up into two logs. And that would be subtraction. So log base a of x minus log base a of y. So same exact thing as an exponent law, like when you subtract the exponents. Well, this is like when you divide the arguments, you can also subtract the logarithms. Okay, log of a power, so similar to power of a power, I guess. So if you have this x to the power of something, you can relocate this exponent here to, you can actually move the exponent out in front of the log. So it becomes n times log a of x. So we can relocate this exponent in front of our log. Which kind of makes sense, right? Because it's actually kind of into the addition one. So if it was like x squared, and then we wanted to move the 2 out here, it's like we actually had, you know, x squared is technically x times x, which we could have rewrote as like log a of x plus log a of x. And since there's two of those, we could actually write that as 2 log a of x. So I'm just proving my point that you could take an exponent and like move it out front. 
I don't know if that proved it. I'm trying to like not make a super long video. Oh yeah, so you can rewrite the exponent and that's what we got from that. Log of a reciprocal. <clears throat> so you can, I don't know, I'm just going to show you this how it works, but you know how we talked about negative exponents? So technically this guy, I'm just going to write it over here, is could also be written as log base a of x to the negative 1, because 1 over x, you know how you, you could write that as x to the negative 1 because it's the same thing because x to the negative 1 could also be written as 1 over x. Okay. So then from there, you can take this exponent and put it in the log. So it becomes negative 1, which you don't have to write the 1, log a of x. So these log of reciprocal, a lot of times you can just stick the negative out there. And it would work the same if you had, like, um, say you had, like, log a... 1 over x squared. Well, you could rewrite that as log a x to the negative 2, and then that negative 2 could go out front, so it becomes negative 2 log a of x. So sometimes we prefer to write it like that as opposed to with the fraction. Okay, so just some more ways to write logs. That's a reciprocal guy. Log of the base. So it turns out if the argument are the same exact number, what do you think your logarithm would equal? I'm guessing 1 all the time. So that's saying, like, if you had log base 2 of 2, that's pretty much saying, like, 2 to the power of what would equal 2? Well, it's always going to be 1. So if these guys are the same, this guy and this guy, your answer is going to be 1. And a log of 1 is always going to be 0. Because if you think about it, that's like saying a to the power of what equals 1, and we know that anything to the power of 0 equals 1. A thousand to the power of 0 equals 1, a half to the power of 0 equals 1, everything to the power of 0 equals 1. Okay, so that's actually all of our log of logarithms, laws of logarithms. Um, so then you can use that to simplify expressions. So let's say we wanted to simplify it to a single log expression for these guys. So we got log base 10 of 6 plus log base 10 of 3. If I wanted to write that, I don't know, it, as a single logarithm, uh, since they're being added together and they have the same base, you can multiply their arguments. So it becomes log base 10, which you P.S. don't have to write the 10, of... 6 times 3, which is 18. So I could write that as log base 10 of 18, or just log 18, because the 10's implied. Okie dokie. Lon, hey, ooh, I forgot to say this in video 1. But apparently this guy's popular in university. So lon is called, it's actually the natural <laughs> logarithm. And what lon actually is, is it's actually log base e. And e is a number called Euler's number. And if you typed it in on your computer, it would tell you what that is. It's like two point something, and I never remember it because I rarely use it. And who really cares what the base is <laughs> for now? Um, lawn can be just used in place of log. And you have lawn button on your calculator, which is super handy. So instead of log base 10, you could use ln, which is log base e, which is... Okay, so if we want to write these guys as a single logarithm, they're being subtracted, so I know that's division. So I would say ln of 4x divided by x. So I just take these guys, oops, like the x and the 4, the 4x and the x, and divide them, and then, hey, I could actually simplify it from there. Since I have two x's, I could cancel those guys out, and it's actually just ln 4, which is way cooler than putting this. Okay, I got three guys here. Log base 3 of x, y, z. So if I just do the first two, uh, it's adding, so I know that's multiplication. If I wanted to write it as a single log, say log base 3 of x, y. And then I still got this log base 3 of z. Okay, so then we know subtraction is actually division when we write it as a single. So that would be log base 3 of x times y divided by z. 
and that's all I could do. I'm just rewriting these in different ways. And the whole kind of goal, I don't know, I know, but as we move on towards like A3, we're actually start solving logarithmic equations. And sometimes, I'm just kind of giving you a preview. So this is more like a solving. We're not really there yet. But in order to solve this, I would want to use my laws of logs to help me solve this. So since they both have a base of 2 and they're being added, I know I can multiply their and write it as a single log. So it becomes 3 times x plus 1 equals 4. That looks like a lot easier to solve than two logarithms. And um, from there, I personally would switch this guy to exponential form, I'm thinking. So a base of 2, and this guy's the exponent, so 2 to the 4 equals this guy. 3 bracket x plus 1. So by switching it to exponential form, I can totally solve this. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. If I expand this, I would get 3x plus 3. And if I want to isolate x, I subtract 3 from both sides to get rid of that guy. And then to get rid of that 3 in front of the x, I'll divide. And I get x equals, I don't know, whatever that equals, 13 over 3. So this is actually more a 3 PS there. I don't know, I keep saying PS. Um, but yeah, just to show you kind of like laws of logs in action. So it reduces us down to a single log, and then we're able to get it into exponential form if we want to, and we can solve the equation. Super handy. Okay, so that's the laws of logs. So you should be able to solve all the questions on the homework. Good luck.